Hey, Data Junkies, welcome back. We are continuing our wonderful journey into multiple linear regression. You've already come over the hump of the hill and covered all of the different lecture videos, the things you need to know on how to do and work with linear regression through its fundamental basics. These next few video series lectures are really going to focus on things that we can do to change how we work with the variables, to create new ones, reshape them, transform them, and do different things in order to get more effect and explanation power out of our regression models. So in this particular video, I'm going to focus on something called interaction terms and introduce this concept for you. If you've had work before in factorial ANOVA, which we didn't cover in this course particularly, you will already have a grounding or should have a grounding in interaction terms. But if, you, if you're new to the first time, we'll come from the basics up. So let's go ahead and talk about, well, what are these things called interactions? Well, interactions, when we're coming from multiple linear regression, the whole concept is that we can have more than one independent variable. And when we have more than one independent variable, we can choose to interact them with another independent variable. And we would do that because it allows us to test for influences as two variables relate with each other towards a common dependent variable. So the new terms that we're going to have to work with is what we call a main effect and an interaction effect. Main effects are the coefficient changes on your predictors, the, the regular variables that we're plugging into the model. The interaction effects are the coefficients of interaction terms, right? And we state interactions in a regression model with a multiplicative notation. So independent variable one times independent variable two variable A times variable B. And that's how we go ahead and with the written portion on, on combining these things. But uh, how do they actually work? Uh, what, what are they doing conceptually? Why would we go ahead and use these? So when we say when we have interactions, the idea is that you get an influence effect from one variable. You get an influence effect from a second variable. But we have some theoretical reason that there's a dependency between them that the changes of one group might actually not be static within that group. The second variable may influence some parts of the first variable more for some members than others. We're going to see an example of how this works here in a moment, okay? So let's go ahead and see that, how, visualizing how can you find it. Well, if you have multiple independent categories, let's say you've got something like men and women or freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors and whatnot, each one of these groups can have their own slopes. We saw some of these things before when we were scatter plotting these out and we said, all right, let's make them different colors or different shapes and each one can get their own regression line. Well, when you have that, the idea is if there's no interaction possible, then they're going to have the same slopes. These slopes of the different regression lines will be parallel to each other. And if there is the potential for interaction effects, then these slopes will not be the same. They will be non-parallel to each other. Let's look at a, an example here taken from some biological studies where we have the dependent variable on a y-axis as some sort of trait measure of species. And they can come from two different environments that these creatures can come from, environment one and environment two on the x-axis. Then the lines are being colored uh, by the two different groups, species one and species two. In the first graphic up on A, there's no significant effects. They have, on average, the, the relatively the same means, both by species and by environment. And note that the parallel lines. In number B, we can see that there's a species effect. There's no real difference on average between environment 1 and environment 2, but the species are at two different layer levels, uh, the red and the blue, so there's a different effect by the species, but the lines are still parallel, so there's no real interaction there. In C, we see an environment effect. So there is no real average difference between the species, uh, between the reds and the greens, but there is a difference between the environments. But again, the lines are parallel, so there's no interaction. Uh, but D, we now have x-bar lines. So we can see that there's an average difference by environment and an average difference by species, so there's the potential there for an interaction effect to be occurring. There may be some difference by some environments that are causing different effects on the species. Now, what we could go ahead and say is that some of these things that we're looking at can also be true, even if the main even if the main coefficients are not statistically significant, 
it's still possible for an interaction effect to be statistically significant. These are things that we can explore. Now, of course, there are other different types of how we can see some of these interactions and how they could look. In graphic E, we can see an interaction for the species, but not necessarily the environment when we're looking at these average mean differences here. F shows that we have an interaction with also a change in the environment. So we can see that these get, have different pitched lines in different areas. And in G, it takes an even to more extreme, and we get interaction and species effect and environment effects. So there's all sorts of stuff going on. Depending on the changes in these slopes and where they cross and things like that, there can be different amounts of variables that can be more or less statistically significant for another. How do we go ahead and create these in R so we can see our own? Well, there's two different ways you can write them. The first version that I have up here is going to offer you greater control in your model. You can specify which variables you want to interact with each other in order to produce the main effects and the interaction effects. And the way we do that is you write your linear model, your dependent variable tilde. You put in your independent variable 1, your independent variable 2 plus, plus independent variable 1 colon independent variable 2. And if you want, you can have multiple interactions in here with different combinations. And every time you want to combine an interaction, you just put the two together separated by a colon, plus all of the other variables that you're going to be using in the model. Now, the more automated way to do this is letting R to automatically create your interaction terms. And in this one, we specify with your LM for your linear model, your dependent variable, tilde, independent variable 1, multiply by independent variable 2. And of course, you're going to continue that with pluses for your other independent variables you're going to put in. And anytime you want to cause more interaction effects, you just multiply them together. And so when that happens, that's going to go ahead and create out interaction effects for you just with these two different differences. We'll come back to see what the output looks like in a moment, but let's go ahead and walk through how this might speak on terms of how we can interpret and read so we're ready by the time we get to the R output. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the MT cars data set to kind of help illustrate this stuff out from R. And we're going to ask, does the car's engine's displacement and its transmission type matter for the engine's horsepower? Would a car's horsepower differ if it had an automatic transmission compared to horsepower of a manual transmission. So I have a regression equation where a predicted amount of horsepower is equal to the y-intercept plus a coefficient of horsepower plus a coefficient of transmission plus a coefficient of horsepower times transmission. So from there, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at some summary statistics. My horsepower goes anywhere from 52 up to uh, 335, so there's some wide ranging there with a mean of about 147. My displacement, which is sort of an engine size, if you will, goes from 70, approximately 71 to 471 with a mean of 230, so again, some good spread there. And automatic is a categorical variable, 0, 1, where 0 means it's an automatic, and 1 mean it's, means it's a manual, and it's relatively evenly distributed between the two types. Coming back to our regression equation here, when we're getting ready to do interpretations of these coefficients, B0, this is our y-intercept, so this is the effect you get when we all of the other coefficients are 0. Keep in mind, we can have a 0 here in this case uh, because we can have an automatic transmission. However, a 0 of no displacement, that one might get a little weird because if you've no displacement, you don't really have an engine size, so it might not really be a meaningful y-intercept. B1 is the effect of the displacement in cubic centimeters. B2 is 0 when it's automatic transmission. Uh, B2 is the effect of the transmission when B1 is 0. And B3 is the change of effect in a manual transmission for different levels of displacement. This is where we're going to see does an end when there's a different type of engine with displacement, how is it going to vary? So again, this idea is that manual cars are going to have different amounts of displacement compared to automatic cars. So let's go ahead and see how this looks like when we change some of these graphics up. This first plot here, I have all of the cars plotted out with a single regression line. This is just looking at the horsepower regressed by displacement. I can change it up so I can look at now 
the different groups of cars by automatic and, tran and manual transmissions, but I'm still using a single regression line. The single regression line is probably not going to be that best ideal fit, because if you're looking at the red and green colors that are also differentiating by their shapes a little bit, that these groups do look like they're plotted in sim in, in different areas here. So what I'm going to actually do is fit two different regression lines for these. And note they have non-parallel slopes. They could be opened up for an interaction effect. So I, I'm going to do is run my regression model in R, and I'm regressing horsepower by displacement trans times transmission. And that's going to generate for me three regression coefficients, one for displacement, one for transmission, and one for displacement by transmission. And what we can see is that the displacement is statistically significant, the interaction is statistically significant, but not so much the uh, transmission variable itself. Let's go ahead and do some calculations and interpretations on this, though, by the way. So what I have here is my regression, I've rewritten the regression equation with the coefficient values in place along with the names of the variables there from which I can also then go and start with doing some of these interpretations. So that when automatic transmission is equal to zero, keep in mind this was not statistically significant here, but if we're just doing this for the sake of doing these interpretations, that when the transmission is zero, meaning automatic, <clears throat> every additional cubic centimeter of displacement corresponds to an average increase of 0 0.408 horsepower. How do I get that? Well, I have my regression equations. I'm kind of coloring out my y-intercept and the transmission value, because I'm not fading those out to be zero. And I'm fading out as well my displacement, which is going to show me that I have my regression value of for every additional cubic center of displacement. That is the effect for an automatic transmission vehicle. Now, for manual transmissions, when the AM value is equal to one, we get an average increase of 0 0.483 horsepower for every additional cubic centimeter of displacement. How do I get that? Well, I'm isolating out everything except that interaction effect. Now keep in mind, this is the, this is the additional effect that manual cars are receiving in addition to what automatic cars are receiving at every level of displacement. Okay. Manual cars and automatic cars automatically got a bump from the displacement. This interaction says this is the extra amount that manual transmission cars get in addition to the automatic. So far, so good? All right. Let's see another one on how this might work with categorical values here. Okay. So in this particular case, I'm coming up with a hypothetical dependent variable of athletic performance and two independent variables one where you're healthy, one being healthy, zero being not healthy, and gender, one equals male, zero equals female. And from there, I can write out a particular regression equation where I can have my first variable of being healthy, my second variable of being gender, and my third variable of healthy times gender. And depending where I put in my zeros and ones, I can find out the different effects of health for men and women. There are several possible outcomes here and they have the same base equations, so let's go ahead and look at the mean differences between some of these particular groups. If I was to go ahead and put in all zeros across, these would be the effects for unhealthy women, keeping in mind that zero was for healthy, zero for gender indicated female, and then the two regressions of zero by zero for healthy and gender would cancel out the effects. So these are only going to be the overall amounts for unhealthy women in the predicted value. If I had the effect of unhealthy men, I'm going to have un uh, healthy is going to be zero for the unhealthy effect, one for gender, meaning that they are a male, and then the gender for healthy by gender in third regression coefficient, that's going to multiply across out as zero. So I'm only going to get the effects of unhealthy men in the prediction. Now if I want to see the effects of healthy men, then I'm going to have scores of one on the indicators going across. So healthy equals one, I get the regression coefficient for healthy. Gender equals one, I get the regression coefficient for being male. And then on, then I get healthy by gender's interaction, so those multiply by one, and I get the coefficient effect of healthy men get this particular bump over unhealthy men over healthy women. Healthy women had the bump for healthy, the 
zero for gender, and then they also get the zero out for the interaction of healthy and gender because there's a zero in there. So just these two different uh, predictors, zero one alone, we get that interaction, and we can actually model out four different predicted value effects to see how they can change by these different level of groups. And so we can look at these at mean differences and plot them out and draw some fantastic conclusions here. Now, just keeping in mind, when do you use these inter interaction terms? Well, the first thing you should fall upon are theoretical reasonings. Why would you do this in the first place? Yes, we can go ahead and interact everything under the sun. Every time you do is going to take up more degrees of freedom, and it's going to give you more things to explain. It's going to push down your R squareds. But uh, you could. You could certainly go ahead and do that. But you really fall back on why things happen in the real world. Should there be a reason why one value should be different from another? Right? If we were saying, do we think men and women are going to differ by their ages when estimating athletic performance? Do they age? Does their athletic performance differ as they get older or when they are younger, different from each other by gender? And if the interaction terms are statistically significant, you can go ahead and keep them in the model. If they're not statistically significant, then go ahead and, and pull it out. It's not really adding any contribution to your model just to have it there. Now keep in mind, when you're putting in interaction terms, they should satisfy both theoretical and statistical significances here, really. That's when you're going to want to have that. But I'm going to recommend, I'm going to have a couple more links here in the video. I recommend to go check out some videos by Mike Marin, who has them on how to do different interactions with uh, in regression and how to interpret them as well. I think they're fantastic things to keep an eye on. And with that, I'm going to leave you all for the next video, and I'll see you all next time.